So the month is officially over and that means it's time for a wrap up. Hi, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and today is our last Spooktober episode for 2023. And that is the Spooktober wrap up. So today I'm going to talk about the books that I read in October. If you're new here, October is my all horror month. So yeah, that means that I only read horror in October. And so today is going to be the wrap up of what I read in October. Um, before we get into it, make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know what I'm posting. I post every week and all we do on this channel is talk about books. So if you like listening to people talk about books, here I am every week doing just that for you. Before we get started, let's talk about my rating system just real quick in case it's your first time. Five stars means it's the best book I've ever read. I absolutely loved it and I'll recommend it to everybody. Four book, four books. <laughs> four stars means I really liked it but it wasn't perfect. Um, but I would still recommend it to people. Three stars means I didn't like it, but it was probably a subjectivity issue and the book just wasn't for me. Doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't absolutely love it, it just wasn't meant for me. Two stars means I didn't like it and I won't recommend it to anybody. One star is the worst of the worst, I absolutely hated this book. I won't recommend it to anybody and I probably won't read the author ever again either. One star is very rarely happens for me. So if you've been following along on the Spooktober train, um, October was wild for me. It really was. I just had so much going on. It was a lot. Emotionally and physically, October really wrung me dry. <sighs> now, about the books that I read in October. I didn't read as many as I wanted. And honestly, it was because, like, seriously, every book on the list, like, if you go back to the Maybe series, I talk about this a lot, like, every book on the list was really, really big, and I just knew I wouldn't have time to read more than three. Like, I'm surprised I got three done because they were all kind of big. I'm not going to say that I was disappointed in this Spooktober because I read three really good books. They're all rated pretty high, spoiler alert, but, um, were they the best horror books I've ever read? No, I've read better horror books this year than what I read this month, and I will talk about it when I get into each individual title, but I'm not going to say I was disappointed. Last year, I was disappointed with my lineup. This was a good lineup this year. It just, two of the books really didn't hit the horror high marks for me, but they were really good books. They just weren't really, I wouldn't even really categorize them as horror, but here we are. Let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about what I read in October. The first book I read in October was Coldbrook by Tim Levin. Levin or Lieben? I'm not sure. Okay, so premise of this book was really cool. Like, the whole idea of this book was really, really awesome. I really enjoyed a lot of this book. We have a group of scientists that have a bunker in the Appalachian Mountains and their whole purpose of like having this laboratory bunker type thing is that they're trying to tap into the multiverse and they do. They're able to make a portal to another world. In the process of doing this something from another world enters into our world or their world and spreads a disease that overtakes our planet in a matter of like two days or something like that. In the fight to end this and to get everything under control, we've found out that there is one person on our earth that is immune to this disease. And so the whole mission is to like get her to the bunker so that they can figure out a way to eradicate what's happening on Earth. I don't really want to tell you much more because it would like kind of spoil things. This book just had a ton going on. Like we have that whole front whole story going on. This is basically like a zombie apocalypse type book. We have this like zombie hostile takeover happening on our Earth, right? And at the same time we have all this um, multiverse stuff happening. We're having all of this scientific things happening with this cure. We also have multidimensional stuff happening. There's a lot of things happening in this book. Now, did this work as a horror book for me? No. At no point was I really freaked out. 
there were a few, and I do mean a few, good gore moments. They didn't last very long and I think they could have been done better. I think this edges more on sci-fi horror than anything else, but like when I was wanting to read it and I saw that it was a zombie book, I immediately thought it would be more gore heavy and it really wasn't. So it really is heavy on sci-fi. I almost would not even categorize it as a horror but more as like a blatant science fiction book. Um, the multiverse themes were really good here. There was some, there was an underlying theme that was happening in this book that I was a little disappointed in because I just think it was not really necessary. And I don't know, it didn't really work for me. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it would really ruin like the book, like the setup and everything, but I just didn't see it as necessary and I feel like it just kind of got in the way. And it was a huge part of the book that I just, I dreaded it when we got to this person's point of view and we were meandering through it. I, it just didn't work for me. I thought it was just too much. We already had enough going on in the book. I really didn't think we needed that aspect of it. But I would say um, science fiction wise, this was really solid. Like we had a lot of really cool themes in it and it was very action packed. Um, almost like anthropological too. Like it was really interesting like the multiverse takes that they had on this. I really liked that. And uh, I don't know if you guys have been here a minute, like a couple months ago said I was really tired of the multiverse. And immediately when I opened this book, I knew it was a multiverse book. And I immediately like cringed and almost thought about just abandoning it and moving on to something else because it was in with, within like the first 10 pages. But I'm glad I stuck with it because this multiverse theme or take on it really did work for me because it wasn't too technical and I appreciated the work that Tim Lieben did on it to make it work so smoothly. Good horror? No, I wouldn't say so. There were some interesting horror aspects in it but nothing that really like shocked me or like scared me. But as a science fiction book, this book really delivered. I ended up giving it four stars. I really liked it. Um, this is one when I said in the opening that it just, it didn't feel horror to me. It really didn't. It really felt science fiction. If you like the movie World War Z, you, or the book, I think, um, I haven't read the book, so I don't know. I think you would really like this because World War Z really did have more of like that science fiction edge to it. I would sort of say if you liked I Am Legend you might like this, but I Am Legend had a really more of like a hard edge on it and this one didn't have that. But the whole point of I Am Legend was for him to find like the cure for everything and so they sort of have a similar storyline there with that. It was really interesting. I will say that and I think Tim Lieben did a really good job. Like I said, uh, the reason it didn't get the five stars was one, because it didn't feel horror to me and it is marketed as a horror book. And two, um, there was just one theme that was prevalent like about halfway to the end of the book that I just, I didn't think he needed it. I don't know why it was important to have that in there, but yeah, overall not bad. So the next book I read in October was The Ruins by Scott Smith. Okay, this one gets lots of points for just being creative. <laughs> so we have four American friends. Okay, they're graduating from college and about half of them are going on to like master's programs and stuff and the other half of them are just going into the workforce. So we have two female best friends and each of their boyfriends. They decide to go on the off season to, oh shoot, now I can't remember where it is. Sorry, <laughs> I'll put it up here. Um, I can't remember where it is, but they, they decided to go there on the off season to celebrate moving on and everything and finishing college. While they're there, they meet, um, a guy from Germany who's there with his brother and then they meet a group of, um, people from Greece. Yes. Um, three, three men from Greece and they all just kind of hang out, you know, they don't all really speak the same language. The guy from Germany speaks English, so they're able to communicate, communicate with him pretty well, but the Greeks do not speak English or German. So like they just come around and have a good time with them. Basically, it's basically just a bunch of people having a party and having a good time. So a couple days before they're supposed to leave, the German friend comes up to him and says, Hey, my brother's been missing for like three days. Um, 
he told me that he went to this like dig site with this girl and our plane leaves tomorrow. Will you come with me to the dig site to help me find my brother? And they all agreed to go. And then when they get there, they realize that this place is like in the middle of nowhere, like the jungle. And eventually they find where this dig site is and immediately everything goes horribly wrong. Like they're surrounded um, by local people. I think they're Mayan, like from an ancient city that's like not from local civilization. So they're like very far removed from like modern like civilization. And everything just kind of spirals from there. And the only ones that are with them is the four Americans, the German, and one of the Greeks go because the other two Greeks were out partying the night before and didn't get up in time to go with them. And this is their like story of like finding safety in this crazy thing that's happening to them and how they're going to survive. So I would say this is like, I would say half of this is like a survivalist book. So if you like themes like that, you probably would like this. Um, the other half of it is sort of like a horror book. Um, I would say it's very horror light. There was some really disgusting moments though. Not super gore, okay? It's definitely not, you know, net cutter gore or anything like that. But there were some moments that just gave me the willies. On top of it being a survivalist book, it's also like a book, almost like a social experiment because it's... Survivalism is a lot about like... How, how well do you know yourself and how well do you know the people that you're with at the time? And two of these people that these four Americans are with, they've just met. And actually these four Americans, they're not even all really friends. Like the two guys aren't even friends with each other. Like they're just acquaintances basically because their girlfriends are best friends. There's a lot of like dynamics, like social dynamics happening in this book too of like what happens when your safety is on the line, right? And you're with these people that you don't really know that well. Lots of points for originality because I really did not see it coming, like the big horror um, aspect of the book. I didn't really see that being the outcome, but there are some flaws in this book. Number one, when we get introduced to the horror aspect of the book, there really is no way um, forward from there. Like it's introduced pretty early in the book and once it was introduced I immediately thought like well what are they gonna do now? And that's basically the whole, all I thought through the rest of the book. There really wasn't, for how, for how much of a social experiment this book was, it didn't lean into that hard enough for me. I was really expecting a lot more on that front of it, of like what happens to people when they're stuck somewhere together. And um, I just didn't really lean into that very much and I was expecting um, things to drag out a little bit more and it really didn't. Like everything kind of happened really quickly after everything came to light, which was a little disappointing. Another thing about this book, there are no chapters in this book. I almost say it's like a live timetable of what's happening and then like the points of view switch. Like there's a, there will be like a paragraph break and you can tell that the narration has changed like somebody else's like we're getting it someone else's point of view um and that's what the whole book is like they'll just be point of view shifts um every couple of pages and we're only hearing from the four americans on that front from the povs but yeah there's no chapters it's almost like a live timeline of what's happening to them as they're stuck in the middle of the jungle like I said, lots of points on originality because I really didn't see the big horror thing coming. But once it did come, I was a little disappointed. Like, there just was no more going up. Do you know what I mean? Like, they threw it out there and it was like, we're at the top and there's nowhere else to go. And there really was nowhere else to go with the plot line. Like, once, they, once uh, Scott Smith revealed the horror aspect of it, there really wasn't anywhere else to go with the storyline. And it didn't really go anywhere else. I ended up giving this four stars because the pace was excellent. Like, I, I couldn't put this book down. Like, honestly, I I think I read it in, like, two days. The the chapter, like, not having a chapter break or, every, or anything, like, really kept me going with it. The point of view shifts were really helpful for the pace, too. Um, lots of originality, like I said. 
but it couldn't get the five stars because it didn't feel horrorish enough. Like there were a lot of things that I would have liked to see in the book that just were not there. Um, and then the ending, the ending was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> ending was pretty good because um, it just it broke me a little bit the ending it was just kind of devastating what ended up happening but this was another one where it's like did it really feel like horror no it felt more like a survivalist book um, with horror light horror aspects in it um, there just were a lot of things I really wish there was some expansion on but it was a really good book so I gave it four stars Okay, the last book I read in October was episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. Okay, if there's a winner for October, which the other two books were four-star books, this is going to be the winner for October, okay? Because this had a lot of stuff in it that I really, really like for horror. First of all, it's a paranormal book, so that gets a lot of high notes for me from horror books. And I just really like the setup, like it was just super interesting. Okay. Let me do the premise real quick. So there is a group called Fade to Black and they have a ghost hunters um, TV show, documentary TV show, right? And they decide to go for their 13th episode of their first season. They go to Foundation House, which is kind of like in the middle of nowhere. And the history behind the, this house is like super interesting. Like, first of all, it was a plantation type home. So there's sort of like this, you know, probably a lot of negativity energetically um, there, but in the 60s or 70s, a group of scientists like went to Foundation House with a lot of volunteers and they did a lot of like really weird experiments on them trying to bring out your natural superpowers. So there was a lot of really weird experimentation happening in this house too. And then um, all of the people involved in those experiments, like anyone that was at the house, all the doctors and everything, the scientists that were running the experiments disappeared. And the only people that survived ended up either like killing themselves because they were so messed up or there's, I think there is one survivor and they do talk to him in the interviews. So the whole situation around that is like very mysterious and no one really has any answers pertaining to that. So the team from Fade to Black decides that they want to do their 13th episode at this house and try and like figure out what happened to these scientists and maybe get in touch with some spirits, right? As you do on a ghost hunter show. When they get there, everything feels just like really active right away and then we just get into the ghost hunting portion of the show. The interesting thing about this group is that it's very diverse. Like we have people that have a lot of different experiences like with the other side of the veil, so to speak. But the two people that run the show are a husband and wife duo. And the husband is really into paranormal, obviously, but the wife is like a hardcore scientist. And so she's basically there to debunk everything. Like if it can be debunked and she can say, no, it was a draft or no, it was this, then she'll do it. So it kind of helps keep the show like real or authentic because there's someone there with the cast and the crew, like telling them like, that's not real. Like scientifically coming in and picking it apart. Oh my gosh, after that long explanation. <laughs> so they go to Foundation House and like things start happening and yeah, it's a paranormal book. Things I liked. So this is written in a found footage style. So it's a lot of interviews. It's a lot of like um, camera work. So it's like, it's literally like, it'll kind of describe the scene and then it'll tell you who's talking and like give you their dialogue. Like there's not a lot else happening on the page. Then we get uh, journal entries and things like that. So it's very found footage. If you can't stretch your imagination a little bit, uh, I would not recommend this book. Like it really, you really do have to fill in a lot of the gaps yourself, but I kind of find that fun. That was fun for me, but um, 
a lot of people in the review section of this book hated that aspect so I think that if you don't like things like that like a DIY book then yeah this probably wouldn't work for you I really liked the addition of the science or the scientific character here um, now that was another complaint in the review section because like obviously I think if you're like Sheldon Cooper or like Stephen Hawking you probably would read this and not be very impressed by this scientific person by this woman's findings or whatever so obviously if you're studying black holes for your thesis or something like that or you're you know really into scientific theories uh this might rub you the wrong way just because it's probably not 100 percent accurate this is a fiction writer writing something not a doctoral student or you know a science professor or a doctor okay so yeah I enjoyed it because it was dumb enough for me to understand <laughs> but I could also like theorize myself while I was reading it obviously if you're at a higher level with your scientific theories and stuff like that you probably wouldn't appreciate that it's probably not really that accurate or very well written but I really liked it I really liked it because she poked holes and she really like made them all look at things at a different perspective and I did enjoy that. Was it scary? I've read scarier paranormal books, okay? The reason this got such a good rating from me was because it was completely different and I don't mean that it was a found footage book because I've read found footage books before and it's been fine. I mean that most paranormal books we're sitting there something goes bump in the night, right? And then we investigate. That's what a paranormal book is, right? Things that go bump. This was so much bigger than that. And I really liked the expansion on the idea. Instead of us just taking like the normal paranormal formula and, you know, going with that, it was an expansion of something so much bigger than that. And I thought it was really, really interesting. It was just a new viewpoint of paranormal and I really liked it like he just kind of stretched my mind a little bit more instead of it being you know a canned paranormal book um it was just something so much bigger and I like that was it perfect no definitely wasn't perfect definitely had issues with this book but um overall I really enjoyed it I I thought it was just nice it was a breath breath of fresh air for paranormal for me it was just a nice look at something completely different like I said, I like the scientific aspect of it. I like that it was a story within a story because the whole time that we're doing this like um, TV show thing, we're also trying to figure out what happened to all these scientists and stuff that were there in the 60s and 70s. The reviews on this book are highly mixed. I encourage you to look through those if you're on the fence about reading this, um, especially if you have like some people whose opinions you trust pretty well. Uh, I would definitely look into what they're saying about this book. I gave it four stars. I had a good time with it. I also just didn't take it too seriously. You know, and I think that's something that people do with books maybe a little too much. <laughs> it's a fiction book. Uh, it's a paranormal horror book. I mean, how serious are we supposed to be taking things um, at this level? So yeah, I think if you don't take things too seriously, I think if you have the imagination for a fill-in-the-blank book, which this is a fill-in-the-blank book, and I think that if you just want something that's a little bit more outside the paranormal box than, you know, your typical haunting style book, uh, this ticked a lot of boxes for me. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. October was weird. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm glad October's over. I need to move on um, and leave all of that behind. Um, I had a good Spooktober. Like I said, it wasn't my best lineup, but all the books were good. They just weren't all necessarily horror books to me. So I had a good time. I hope that you guys had a good time with Spooktober. Um, make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know when I'm posting. I post every week. Let me know in the comments if you read any good horror books this month or if you read any of the books that I read this month and what you thought of them. I love hearing from you guys. There's going to be an Indigenous Heritage Month post coming up in November that I'm really excited about, excited to talk to you about. And I've already finalized my lineup for November and I'm really excited. So, 
that's all I have for you guys and I will see you guys next time. Bye!